What up, what up, what up, man? It's Lil' Man, and I just poured up with beers and bottles. Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh. What? Beers and bottles. Beers and bottles. Beers and bottles. Beers and bottles. Flies. Bad as mobs. Pop. Pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your main man, PBM Louie. It's the only GL. And with beds and bottles. Got a special, special guest today. I ain't special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guest, though, you heard? What up? It's Lil, man. Uh, DJ Who Lil, else? Man. We got Lil Who with else? us, bro. Who else? We got the guy uh, in the building. It feels good to have my guy. Let me my one brother, what's up, man? Damn. I told, I told Congratulations on this. This is dope. I appreciate it. Thank you, bro. You, man. People working God. hard, trying to, you know what I mean, get things together. You're doing a great job, man. I, I saw a couple of videos. It's lit. Right. Good job. And, and you know, you know, I knew this guy almost 15 years, right? Yeah. So I had to tell him, like, yo, bro, when I'm interviewing you today, yo, like, I got no holes bars. I got to <laughs> ask you the questions that people want to hear. We even, we even <laughs> ask people what questions to ask you, so... You know what I mean? You know you got a nice fan base and following. Yeah. We just wanted to get real in depth with it. I don't know if you remember the first time we met. Car Street from the park in the house. Which, which one? What? Oh, I think we was on 20th. Car, it was literally a car street from the park in Irving. Oh, 21st. 21st. Oh, off Montgomery. Not my boy. Yeah, one of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the living room. It's like 90 years in there. Oh, that, oh he was, told... You know he talking about? He talking about Hop yeah. Spot. Uh, yeah, at, uh, yeah, G Hop Spot. I think we was there planning an event. Right, right. Oh, yeah. For the, um, uh, 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 up and coming. Ukraine. Ukraine. Up close to person. Up close to person, too. Yeah. Yeah. How 2009, many years? 2010. Yeah. yeah, that's... Wow, that was legendary. Yeah, that was... Yeah, legendary. yeah, he talking about Montgomery. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. That was good times, man. Yeah, that was perfect. So, you know, we want to really get in depth with you. You know what I mean? I know everybody know you, but you might be new to our viewers. So, you know, we want you to get your origin story, where it started with you. Oh. Start from the beginning. Started in Georgia King Village. Um, it was a place called Big Al Records down there on West Market. What year? Uh, for you, I'm saying what year for you around that time. It's had to be every bit of 2005, 2004. Oof. 2005, 2004. High school years. Yeah, I wasn't even actually... Yeah, I was like a, 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 a sophomore junior. Right. Actually, 2001, 2002 is when I got an ear for the music and I started messing with the tables, but I didn't really... Learn how to DJ to like 2003, junior year, right. sophomore year, junior year. Uh, but it, it started at Big Al Records, though, uh, on West Market Street, right there behind Georgia King Village with Great Wall Chinese Restaurant, right, yeah, right, McDonald's, right. Wendy's, all of that. So yeah. it really started there. Before I was at Big Al's, I was outside selling CDs with my uncle, Khalif. We were selling CDs in front of the uh, Chinese store. Man, you always had that hustle ambition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm talking about, I used to like, we used to have it on Smash, speak out there, mixtapes. So we started off, I started off selling CDs. And then uh, it was a cleaners there first. Went into the cleaners. They was gutting it out. Big Al, Troy, and a couple of other guys. And I uh, went in there like, yo, y'all need some help? You know what I'm saying? Y'all need right. some hands? They said, yeah, yeah. Went in there a couple of days. They gave me an assignment. I was walking out of there with like 250 a day. Oh, just just that time, sheet rocking. Them. I learned how to sheet rock. Everything. I learned how to spot. spackle there. I learned, like, they taught me so much hands-on stuff there. Uh, and I didn't know. I never asked them what it was going to be. Right. Just was trying to like you know get money, and uh, four four months after doing all of that, they finally like yeah, it's gonna be a record store. I'm like a record store. I'm like all right, cool. We start hanging up the wall platters and stuff. Then the, then the little hooks where the records go, and then the CD racks. This was CDs was selling crazy. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, so it turned into a record store. Um, and uh, the finished product was just unbelievable. To be able to have a p a part to play in. Turning a laundry mat cleaners into a record store was is was, was like legendary That's for history. me. history. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I learned how to use my hands from there. Like before, I, I probably wasn't doing none of that shit with spackling, paint, all of that. Like I learned a lot with Big Al and them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So shout out to Big Al. Uh, shout out to his wife, Dion. Shout out to BAP. Shout out to them. He was good, good older brothers who took care of me, man. Real shit. So yes. from there, did you transition to the P unit parties? So in the before that, in the mix of that. Uh, because I always had the promoter side. Who opened the doors for me in the promoter is Knockout. 
mm. uh, Hollywood and Hollywood. Jordan. Okay, mm. okay. Um, and they was they started doing the parties over there on Roosevelt. My uncle owned the spot. It was called Soul Blessings SB on. But Roosevelt. But you wasn't DJing yet. You just I wasn't, promoting. Nah. I was just promoting. Right. Uh, it was called Soul Blessings on Roosevelt and Six Seventh Avenue. Right. And uh, my uncle Fahim owned the spot and uh, Knockout, and I used to rent it from them. And uh. I started doing parties at Ortega Hall on 6th Ave and 12th Street. Right, right. And uh, the parties was going crazy. We was doing our thing. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm practicing at this point. Still at Big Al's every day. And then uh, I, I started to get the hang of it. I felt like, you know what I mean? I had the option to be in the streets or play some music. But you know what it is? I always tell these dudes this. Back in the day, if you was a young nigga, if you dealt with the street niggas or not, if you had the CDs going, if you was pumping the CDs, you was the man. Especially if you was like yep. 14, doing it 15 to us. Because who else we was going to be able to hit that exclusive? You know what yeah. I mean? Not only that, all the drug dealers were always wanted that new song they heard on the radio to play in their G-Rods. Right, that's a those fact. Those were who had all the hottest cars that's with the niggas on the block. So if I'm out there pumping CDs over there by the Chinese store, Ferg and I'm going to tell you, like, those some good brothers, man. Ferg right. and them watched me grow up. Like, they they sat there. They used to come and throw money at me and all that. Ferg, Hanif, H&F and them, they good brothers, yeah. man. Right, good dude. Real shit. They, they saw me come from a little ass 12, 13-year-old and into now. So, but yeah, man, like, I, I, that's where it all started there. But before that, I was in Barringer. So we always rapped and we did ciphers in Barringer right, every day. right. And you was a part heavy. of that. I even. was in that cipher, heavy. <laughs> Rapping in there, <everything>. heavy, <laughs> heavy in a cipher. So bring us back to the P unit, like he asked you. Oh, um, so the P unit came on in transition of of, of the Big Al Records. Uh, the store up and running, everything good. I'm in there running it. I'm practicing every day on the turntables. I didn't learn how to DJ first. I started off engineering, hooking up equipment, learning mm -hmm. how to utilize the, the the wires and stuff. Right. Learning XLRs from quarter inches. So it's more so on the sound side. Yeah, on the sound side. I, I started doing that engineering stuff. Um, so I was doing all a Big Al sound for all his parties. Whatever he had to DJ, right, right. I would go set up the system before he get there. Uh, so I started off as an engineer. Bottom, bottom. Exactly. Like, I'm talking about carrying equipment, like big speakers. Carrying like, crates. Yeah, I was, doing, I was that dude. I was that dude, carrying speakers and all of that. Um, I had got with a couple of boys that we all went to Barringer, and we just formed a group called P on it. Rob, uh, Joar, Mike. It was a lot of us, man. We We... Spanish, Dominican, we all got together and we used to meet at Ab House. Mm. And Ab was on 12th Street and we used to put $2 every day inside of a pot until we had enough money to rent a location and pay our sound guy. And how long did that take? Oh, some of them was on the block and then I was making money every week with the place. So it really, did, it probably took us about two weeks. Oh, we only right. needed, oh, we right. only needed $1,500. So, Lou, you never been to a P-Unit party. Nah, you know I'm a, I'm a full-fledged gangbanger. P-Unit parties, that used, to be a, <laughs> that used to be a little vibe. Oh, it was gangbangers in there. Yeah, but I wasn't still, I'm like, I wasn't going to no parties until almost nah, 20 years ago. Nah, I, I, I know like, what type of life you was living. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's a different thing. Yeah, so, I mean, different. We, we motherfucker used to, every every Friday, we all get up in there. Uh, every day, we'll drop off $2 after school. That was our walk path. We'll go drop off $2 every day after school. Friday, we'll count up what we got. Oh, all right, we got 500 Oh, all right, we got 1000 all right, well, damn, we got 1500 The spot only cost 700 The sound only won 350 We got enough to buy water, so now we could get to it. Let's get it. Mm. So we we planned everything out. We had a, a treasurer. We had where the money. Rob and Joe Marvin's the treasurer. They kept the money at their crib on 12th Street. And um, and then our Alpha Team and Ab was like the little the pr promoters. And then I was the marketer slash DJ in the, in the mix-up. Oh, yeah. so that's your first experience with my, DJ exactly. on your own. Exactly. So before that, Frosty was my DJ. Uh, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Frosty was DJing mm -hmm. before me. So, and, uh, and and just to take it a step further, before, after Big Al Records, my first official gig was at Branchbrook. I was at Branchbrook every Friday. Oh, when niggas Folks. was fighting that. Now, I went to them nine, joints. Six nine, nine, was getting nine, 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 out nine, nine, nine to two. I was getting paid yeah. $75 a session, nigga. Yeah, we was getting duffed out down there back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the blood. You know was blood like, there. I was we getting our ass up. Frosty I had Saturdays that. and I had Fridays. I had Fridays six to nine and nine to two. I was getting $75 a session. Jordy was the manager there. Then Malik was the manager there. And Frosty was there on Saturday, six to nine and nine to two. Uh, I mean, uh, 6 to 9 and 9 to 12. They didn't do the two on uh, Saturdays. Yeah. Uh, but Frosty had every Saturday, had every Friday. And that's where my learning and love, my love for DJing really came from there. The party promoting was just me promoting and me paying a DJ, but the love for DJing came from from Big Al's and then the Branch Brook. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, but then the party scene started going on. We started pulling out massive people. And I'm like, all right, cool. It's time for us to get a bigger spot. Uh so I went from P-Unit to calling it P-Unit the Movement. 
because it was bigger than just P on it. We had a whole right. movement. We had like 10 street teams under us. Right. So now we all across the city now. We got people from different places, different hoods. Right. We got all types of people, uh, girl groups, guy groups. We had young groups. And uh, so I came across the Boys and Girls Club. And they're from the Boys and Girls the one Club. One on Clinton Avenue. Avenue. So, so, uh, oh, yeah, Clinton Avenue, Avon Avenue. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So how did you divide the money? Um, you know what I'm saying? Because you so many different people that you So at the beginning, what happened was P Unit was going, we was doing so good, but everybody started to, to grow out of it. Mm. So our last party, we split the pot evenly. Me, okay. Joe Mar, Rob, Alpha Team, Ab, Mike, we all split the pot evenly. I think our last party, we made about 8000 So everybody <clears> went away with about like eight sixty, eight seventy dollars a piece. Um, and not only that, we paid Joe Mar mother, uh, we gave like mom and his sister money his sister, because she worked the door. So we paid right, her, right, too. Right. Like, you were part of the team as well. You made it a family thing. Exactly. So I kept it going. I used that money that I got from there, and um, I just built on top of it, and I threw my own party. Oh, and and I ran with the P unit. Actually, Joe Mar and Rob and me own P unit to this day. And what was what year was that last party you think it was? My last party with Rob and them had to be every bit of 2000 and... Six, five, six. I want to say six. 2006, we did our last party at Ortega Hall. It was the final episode. Damn. Yep, it was the final episode. So we want to speed past a little further because you just mentioned, you know, Frosty Name. We want to get into that before we get into the other stuff. Right? Movie Brothers. Movie Brothers. Yeah. So how did that take shape? And 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 it's, it's a, look, this is going to be like a complicated question, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, no, and it's cool. gonna, it may take a couple minutes. So, you know, how did you... Meet Frosty and you started dealing with him. Obviously, you say you was booking him, yeah. but then do you feel like you play a part in the turmoil that he's been going through lately for him being jumped, being shot, oh. and just having, you know what I mean, this hard luck? I met Frosty uh, at Branch Brook, um, and that was at the beginning. I was there for a session, I, and I'm like, all right, just do the DJ. I'm still, I'm in the engineering time. Uh, I said, I'm going to book you for a party, book them for a punit party. Um, at the time, I'm still learning how to DJ myself with Big Al. So I met him at Branch Brook. I continued to uh, build my relationship with the Branch Brook manager, then decided to say, just give me a Friday night. Just give me a shot. They gave me a shot, and I kept it going consistently every Friday. Um, I can honestly say that I love that brother. Like, I love him genuinely. That's right. my that's my, shows. That's my brother. Yeah, and we, and, and, we and see. one thing everybody can't say is, I, I'm, I'm a disloyal nigga. Like, you know, I'm a loyal, uh, I'm a loyal by default, but at the same token... I got to be able to... Uh, um, separate yourself from Not only separate myself, but I got to be able to chastise them and check them as well, right? Like, right is right and wrong is wrong. Real shit. You know what I'm saying? And 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 um, I believe in if you're taking, taking anybody's money, you don't know that that's for their children. Right. You're taking food out of their kids' mouth. You know what I mean? So, I mean... Please you get them to the services. Exactly. So now back... Just to go back a little bit, I wasn't... I was at the event where he had got shot but I left early because I don't stay at parties. You know, I was outside on, on that other side of town too. Like, right, right. Yeah. I was moving reckless. I had one foot in the street and one, one foot in the music, but all my niggas around me was outside. Right. So I never stayed to the end of the party, but I stayed long enough. You know, the girls just come in. We out. We keep it moving. Me and the gang. Um, I got a phone call when we get in. It actually, he got shot here in Elizabeth. Right. I got a phone call when we got to, uh, I want to say one and nine by lobby, saying that it, it was just a shooting. Frosty got shot. I'm like, Frost, Frosty? Like, he's a fucking DJ, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he got shot in his cousin Mike car right under the bridge. Right. Um, and uh, came back there. It was all taped up and all of that stuff. They had already took him to the ambulance and stuff. I didn't know the severity of it, but I'm like, damn, Frost is a DJ. Like, what is it, a target for DJs now? Right, right. So everybody feeling a certain type of way because Frost ain't no fighter. He not into him with that type of shit. Right. Get to the hospital. Uh, we get a chance. We don't get a chance to see him then and there. They kept him, got a chance to see him the next day. Doctors coming in, like, is a bullet stuck in your neck? You know what I'm saying? He he got he all got the button. He, he in pain. So I understood. I was shot. So I understand. Mine was an in and out. I didn't have a, you know, one large Emmy, but at the right. end of the day, um, I saw that he was in a scoosh, like he was in a lot of pain because he had the button. Um, so, you know, we stood up there a couple days and stuff like that, but I started to notice he would push the button a lot often. Right. And, uh, he'll hit the button and and ask for the nurse, hey, look, I need more. It's not working. It's not working. I'm like, damn, Frost, like, that's a strong drug. Like, what did you keep pushing that button for? Looking at his pain tolerance. And, um, that was the beginning of an addiction, bro. 
And that's just the real shit of it. And, I, and, 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 and that's just, that's it. That was the beginning, right then and there. Him being shot and that bullet being in his uh his neck, which is still in it, is still in now. And um him wanting that high that that button gave him in a hospital, his crave for that is the reason why I think this is a new side of him we see. Mm. You know, and, mm. and the fact of the matter is, if everybody know, like I, I stuck through him even through the roughest. Like I've always was told never cook to kick a nigga when he down. You feel me? Right, right. And uh, and that's my brother, even to this day. I mean. Niggas, you, you got to check them. I mean, I love them from a distance. I can't be around them, can't be associated with them, can't stand next to them, but I can call you good. You know what I'm saying? Check right. on them here and there, make sure he good. Um, I just saw the video, and the video was disturbing because Frosty not a fighter. Right, but, but you then never after know you, what, you know what I mean? You do know that was I, his cousin, though. I do know that. That's what I was yeah. about to say. After doing a little research, I'm like, that's his family. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's his family who did that. So at the end of the day... If your family willing to put their hands on you and take it to the extent to expose you, one, that's your blood. I can't can't yeah. trip on your family. Two, what did you do? What did you do? Is the you know question. what I'm saying? Like, and that's again, my biggest thing is like I don't play with people's time and money at the end of the day. So if it's a situation going on and somebody addressing it, knowing his track record was touching and playing with people's money, I'm not about to jump into that. As much as I love the dude and as much as all my niggas fuck with him, we can't intervene with that. That's that's a choice you made. That's and me shit, knowing he not a fighter makes me even feel even worse, but you got a choice. Everybody got a choice. You made a decision to do what you knew you shouldn't have been doing. So it ain't nothing that I can really do about that. You got to lay in the bed you made. That's it. And I love him. And I'd say it in front of everybody. And he's still the toughest DJ, and I don't think nobody fucking with him. He and I put dope. all my money on that. And he, he had dope, a, a dope ear for music, too. <laughs> like, it's crazy. His, his, I'm just like I said... Everybody shitted on him. Everybody turned their back when he was going through that. And I was the same nigga still stuck and through with the shit. Like, all right, I got him. Nah, we good. Gave him a oh, couple more God. looks after that. Right. Gave him a lot more looks. Mm -hmm. Choices. I, like, I, everybody has a choice. Either you're right. going to stand with a nigga when he's down or you're going you to fold and fall back. And my loyalty always been an issue in life in general. Like, right, you know right. what I'm saying? I think that that's what everybody, if you're really a loyal person, it catches up to you. So I don't judge him. I tell him about himself. And then I tell him I love you. You know, I met Frosty through uh, GL. Like, I didn't really have a real relation with shit with him. You know, you was moving up those years. So to get in contact, you was different. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's a and, fact. And, 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 and I Hollywood even, ass. You know what I mean? I'm not even, even now, it kind of hit you as different. You know what I mean? And I just wanted to say, while, while we on air, though, at the same time, condolences to your son. You know what I mean? It. You know what I mean? I know we ain't really touch on that. I wanted to speak on that as well, yeah, if you definitely. don't mind talking about nah, that. I don't. I don't. And, <laughs> and where you at with it. You know what I yeah. mean? I mean, it's a learning experience, man. Every day is a push in a different prayer. I look at things completely different. You feel me? Right. Um, at the beginning, I, I blamed a lot of people. And I, I re, I'm not going to say who I blame, but... Right, 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 right. I think that anybody in the, in the chance of losing a child, you get to start to figure out, well, how, why, when? How mm -hmm. did this happen? You understand what I'm saying? Like, as a child, as a parent, you're supposed to be more hands-on with. And I feel like because we wasn't in the same state, my hands-on wasn't as hands-on as, as it should have been. Right, right. So before I point blame, I got to I gotta figure out where I went wrong at. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's man shit. That's so, man shit you just said, bro. Yeah, understanding my flaws and where I fell, that I have to take that on the chin and then analyze the situation. Like, what if I did? How, well, how things would have been different? And although I know that answer to that, because I've been in the courts fighting for this for right. months prior to this situation happening. Right, right, right. And uh, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just unfortunate that I had to either, you know, endure that. But I don't question God, and that's just real shit, my nigga. I feel like things happen for a reason, and um, and and it, and it sucks that I had to, it had to be my son, and then not only my son, four other parents' sons, like right. everybody in the car died, not just him. Yeah, that's um, unfortunate. But everything is a, is a learning experience. I look at everything completely different. I spend more time with my daughter now, like every day. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm more hands-on with everything. Every choice, every decision, every move, every step. Conversations are different. I'm not uh, trying to be the, the the bully father and trying to enforce right, certain right. things. Let's talk about it. Like, let's have a conversation. Let's build a little different. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to grow up and be that young lady that I have to sneak. Nah, we can talk about it. Like, right. you had a rough day? She's 13. She just went to eighth grade social yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, um, it's just more so on some shit like, let's have real dialogue and conversations. If your day is having a rough, all right, you got to pass. Tell me about it. Let me hear it from your perspective. Like, and sometimes she get in the car and she vent and she just goes like, 
And then she feel a little better. Then now we could go eat lunch and enjoy time. You know what I'm saying? But right. just you got to be able to just get to their to their level. Things are completely different right now. It ain't like how we was when we were growing up. Yeah, something we got. Word. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you a question though. To go back to your mental health, where were you mentally? Like, how long did it take you to get out that space once you passed away? I'm not out the space. You never get out the oh. space ever. It never changes. Like, it's so crazy because when I got the phone call, I was painting his room. You know, I just got the house. He hasn't even been to the crib in Georgia. You feel me? His room is getting painted. His name is on the wall. I get the phone call while I'm picking up his bedroom set. I'm like, wait, what? Nah. Can't nah. even believe it. I couldn't even believe any of that. So it was, it was a tough one. But you never, you never get over it. Your mental health is just adapt to the situation, but you never get over it. Like, it's not even so much as you stand the funk of beating yourself up. It's more so of understanding that you just lost a child, somebody that, that you that you've been there since day one for it. Right. You know? So everything you do now is a little bit different. I, the way I talk to people, the way I speak to people, the way I, I do things is completely different. I just look at everything completely different. Like, I don't take nothing for granted. I don't take a moment for granted. You know what I'm saying? I don't even... I kind of, like, want to understand these children's logic now because it's different. Right. You know what I mean? But, yeah, my mental health is, 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 is at a pace where it's, it's just steady. But I never had a chance to grieve yet. Cash should tell you, I haven't been stopped. I haven't stopped running since October 17th. <coughs> Excuse me. Damn. Do you feel like you just keep yourself busy to distract yes, yourself? Of course. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's definitely yes. a form of grieving. Yes. You're overwork. Yeah. That's yeah. a form of depression, not grieving. I think yeah. that's a form of yeah. both. It's a form of uh understanding that uh, you know, something dear to you is no longer here, but at the same token, you got to keep moving. Right. So do I feel like it's a form of depression? It could be. Do I feel like it's the worst part of depression? No. I think it makes me want to go even harder and do more because I know if he was here, he wouldn't want me to sit still. Right, real shit. You know what I'm saying? So my my whole existence of moving forward and going harder, elevating, trying to elevate and explore and do shit that niggas thought that I probably couldn't do is because I know if I was sitting there having a conversation or a ride with my little dude in the park, he'd tell me, yeah, dad, you could do that. Right. Of course it could be done. Let's, let's transition to 2020, right? I want to bring it to 2020. I'm like, I know a lot of people was home at that time. And you started having a DJ, niggas was donating, you was doing events, it was, but at home, yeah. you was one of the first guys I seen do it. And if you wasn't the first, you was definitely top three, and you was doing it on a level, like, you know and what I mean? And he kept it going but after the niggas even stopped. After, you still be doing it. I just yeah. seen, but yesterday night, I think yeah, you was doing it. I was it. up there yesterday night, too. So, so let me ask you a question. How did that start for you? Like, where did that start from? What did, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. know you obviously bored it, but where did it really, like... To be honest, I was in debt. Oh, shit. I was in debt. I was in debt. $40,000 uh, March... Of 2020, I was in debt 40 grand, uh, maxed all my credit cards, had about a good 4,000 left in my bank account. Um, I had got a phone call from the from the mayor, and uh, he said to me, um, yo, we about to get ready to lock the city down. Make sure you get, you know, go food shopping and do whatever it is with your, your family because we have to lock the city down. You was in Newark at this time. I was in Newark at this oh, time. I thought you was in the A for nah, some reason. I was in Newark. So uh, this had to be March 16th. I got a video of this on my Instagram as well. March 16th was the lockdown. I got the phone call on March 13th. It was a Friday. Monday, right. he locked down. Um, called me Sunday and said that I had to make a video because we want to get people in tune with staying in the house or stay in place, stay home. So I'm like, all right, cool. In the midst of that, he gave me the green light to just like, you know, get your family stuff situated because we get ready to go on lockdown. So I'm like, all right, cool. I had about $3,000 in my account. I had to go food shopping for three houses. My house, my daughter, mother house, and my mom's house. And still find a way to send money down to my son from, from, from her house. Right, right, right. right. I had $3,000. I still had to pay rent. I still had to pay phone bill, cable, and all of that. Um, so then I started going food shopping. I spent about $1,300. I'm in food shopping. Right. I'm down about $1,700. I still got to pay bills, all of that. So now I'm just in my mind. And no bullshit. And I could call him right now. My brother Juice called me with a lick. Nobody, I never told this to nobody. I'm lying. I said it one time exclusive, live. Exclusive, exclusive. Exclusive outside of that live. This is real exclusive. My brother Juice called me with a lick from a young lady who used to work at Forever 21 in Short Hills Mall. Right. At the time, um, the mall was closed. They had already closed all the malls. There was no malls open. But she had the keys to the safe and said it was $67,000 in the safe. Oh, man. I would have been there. But go ahead. Real shit. Hmm. That was on Sunday the, 4th, the 15th. I went to 
Sunday the 15th at 2 o'clock in the morning, I got up and went to church in Patterson, CFC Christian Fellowship with Reverend Rouse. And out of that moment, the Reverend called my name and told me to stand up. First and last dance, the church I got saved in with Miss uh, Trouble Film is up there right. in Patterson. Shout out to them. Um, called my name. I haven't been to that church in like, I want to say 10 years. Called my name, stood up, and this pastor told me to sit still. Wow. Mm. That pastor said my first and last name and said, I remember you. You used to come here with Miss Troublefield, Pastor Renee Troublefield. And that reverend told me to sit still. Don't worry about nothing. Just sit still. And I ain't understand what that meant at the time because I'm like, I got to pay bills. I got to be outside. I got to make something happen. Yeah. And somebody just said they got a lick. And I got a lick. That was supposed to go on at 10 p.m. that night. I got out of church, went and grabbed some food. I'm with juice. We get to the house. I'm like, all right, I'm chilling. I'm relaxing. Did all the food shopping, did all of that, cleaned the house, did all of that, washed the clothes, I'm chilling. We were supposed to link up at 1045 on the highway with a dummy vehicle. Mm. I fell asleep, ain't wake up to 3 o'clock in the morning. By accident. But By accident. I was just tired after doing everything. Mm. Stayed in the crib. I just relaxed. That Monday on the 16th, Channel 12 News and everybody was saying that they were shutting down the city of Newark. They did a press conference. I'm like, damn, what the fuck am I going to do? I missed the lick. They about to clear out the safe. So I said, fuck it. I'm going to go live. I need to do something to ease my mind real quick. Man, I got on live on Monday, March 16, 2020. Got on live at 7 p.m. I didn't get off live till 10. Three hours. Ugh. I made $8,000 that first live, my nigga. In three, in three hours? In three hours. Shit. Yeah, I've seen them shits. My initial, through. my initial was never to even do it for money. It was just the love I had. Let me just do something to relieve myself. Yeah. Went up there and somebody like, All yeah, cash put app. your cash app up there. And I'm like, my cash app? I'm going to put my cash app up here. I'm, now I'm thinking like... They scamming. That and my ego. Yeah, yeah. Like I ain't Niggas exactly. don't know me from being a nigga yeah. who was in the negative. They know me from being a nigga who was up. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? So I put it up there. Shit start ringing, 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 ringing. I'm like, man, what the fuck? Going live, shit going crazy, 10 o'clock, get off. I'm like, yo, don't. I'm about to do an after dark set. I'm going to go on from 12 to 2. I just got off, finished turning up. Everybody turned up. Now we want them to wind down. 12 to 2, I get up there, so made another... So you're responsible for some of them quarantine babies. My nigga, I'm, I'm responsible for a lot of that shit. How much you made? Go back to what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. So, 12 to 2, you went up there to have to made another made, what? I made another 4,000 from 12 to 2. Lord, now I'm up 12. I'm up 12, but I'm I ain't up. Because remember, keep in mind, I'm still in debt 40 yeah, grand. Yeah, yeah. So my mind ain't thinking I got 12,000 right now. My mind thinking like... I just took the debt down. 28 to go? I got to right. keep going. Yeah. I get up the next day. Shit, everything locked down. Food in the house. We chilling. Juice cooking breakfast. You're like, yo, what time are you going live? I'm like, I don't know. Let me get Frost over here. Let me get Frost. Frost can just start up the live session. We'll just rock and roll from there. Frost go live. Everything going good. Now we up there from 7 to 11. Mm. Cash app going crazy. Made another eight grand. How I'm like, you, how much you hit Frosty with? I hit Frosty with a thousand. Hit Frosty with a thousand. Yeah, good. Oh. So we kept going. We kept it going. I, and I started day one, day two, night one, night two, night three, night four. I just kept it going. Doubling up. 7 to 11. Go back on live 12 to 2. After dark session, kept doing it, kept I done days. sent 15 in that motherfucker. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Kept that shit going. Tune, too. No bullshit, bro. I want to say about April 10th, I'm at 50 grand in my fucking account, bro. I'm out. A month later. I'm not even a month. Le oh, less than a month. Less than yeah. a month. I'm out of debt. I got 10,000. I got to keep going. Pay all my credit cards off. Everything go off. I'm up 10,000. I'm like, all right. Now I got to start find a way to generate more revenue on top of what I'm doing. Live was just cool, but now I got I want more. So what I started doing is brand and Facebook Lounge. Yeah. Everything is a brand now. Facebook Lounge. Fly. Give me, I need a fly. I need a, I need a dude to do a fly for me every day. Now I'm turning into a business. I'm paying my flyer man $100 a week. Yeah. You feel me? $100 a week. Give me three, give me four, give me five flyers. Every day he had a fly for me. Day one, day two, day three. Every day I had a fly. Every day was a theme. Monday was turned up. Tuesday, $2 Tuesday, Wild Out Wednesday, Throwback Thursday, Fuck them Up Fridays. Every day was wild a thing. Cause wild. Going crazy. Now I start getting shirts. Went and spent mad money on all the equipment for the shirts. Juice sat down and learned how to press the shirts and do all of that shit. He learned it. 
We start going crazy. Now how we much you, how, how much you hit Juice with? Juice was getting paid, I want to say, $1,500 every Thursday. During the pandemic... I'm asking him this for a reason. That's how that's you build amazing. a team. Yeah. Yeah. The fly dude was making money. Juice was making money. I was making money. Frosty made money. Frosty made money. And every DJ I had on my show... Made money. Made money. Samil, what Frank White, uh-huh. any DJ that I ever brought up there... Made Beloved, money. everybody that I brought up there got paid for being up there. That's love. You know what I'm saying? During the pandemic, mind you, we on lockdown. Start selling shirts, crazy, all types of colors, all of that shit. Then I start selling shot glasses, wristbands, posters. I was signed posters with my name on it. How much you made off all that? We used to buy about the shirts. We bought about 20 dozens. I was selling the shirts at 25 a piece and the hoodies at 40. I was killing them. And they sold out. Completely sold out every seven days I was sold out. I got videos that I'm going to send to y'all so y'all can put up there too of me and Juice going to the fucking post office with two big-ass garbage bags mm. full of merch to just send out. You feel me? I'm going to send y'all another it's video a, on my first... Thing. On my... On my... my I want to say the my first After Dark Night when I made about 4000 My cash app is closed. I screen recorded it and I opened it and that shit came up. 4,200 and some change. I'm going to see y'all that video so you can uh-huh. put that shit in there. So, so. You feel yeah, me? You hear this, Rico? So. Oh, yeah, we need that. My main thing is, like, I kept it going because the people were enjoy- enjoying themselves and I was generating. I'm out of debt. I'm up 10. By what? May, I'm up 50,000. Out of debt. The end of May, beginning of June, I'm up 100 grand. <sighs> I want to say... My credit going up. I'm going crazy investing and getting my shit together. Lining all my shit up. Everything I said I was going to do when I get up again, I started doing. Last time I got a, my, my record deal with Atlanta Records, they, they shot me off on $250,000 cash and a $400,000 marketing budget. I cut the $400,000 marketing budget down to two hundred and fifty dollars and told me to give me $300,000 in cash. Team Little Man Anthem in my part one and two had already generated enough money for me to compensate that. Mm-hmm. I had to do a 24-video deal. Uh, and that was two videos a, a one per month for two years. I had got out of my contract in 19 months. I was already out. They already recouped and all of that shit. I already generated. So when it came time to re- renew, I didn't renew, but I blew that money. Right, yeah. right. Was already blown. on dumb shit. Yeah, the Rinsons, Maserati, clothes, Mazi, dumb shit. Just uh, I know you had popped out I didn't the understand Mazi. the importance of the money when I had it. I didn't like ah, I got money, whatever. Then I always told myself after. When I got down again, the next time I give up, get up, I'm going to do it right. This was that, that time I got up again. And you did everything you said. I did you. everything I said I wanted to do. By January, I bought my first house on inauguration day, January 20, 2021. Got my first house. You feel me? Five acres. Six bedrooms, four, five bathrooms. Talk to him. Movie Talk theater. To Talk to You him. feel me? Like, that was the first thing I did. Next thing, I wanted to get all my jewelry. Went to cop me a nice little Roly. You know what I'm saying? Right. We see you. Got me I see you shining, nice dog. Piece. I see you, you shining, dog. You know Everything that I wanted to do outside of me being a responsible adult with the money, I did it. Yeah. Then came the vacations, pointless shit. Then the vehicles. Went cop me a nice little 750 BMW. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Nice little... Uh, my SRT was already going. I had my Impala already moving. So just doing shit that I knew I wanted to do, investing. Then I started doing investments. Booking parties, doing... You know, Trey Song shit, right. booking artists, doing doing shit yeah. like that. But the most important thing of it, it was when everybody was kicking me down while I was going live, saying this nigga got his cash up, he's still going, he's still going, not knowing that I had a goal at the end of the day. Right, right. My right. goal was, yeah, I was capitalizing off everybody, but I was giving them a service. This was a service. Like, nah, you, you, was, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Involved, for sure. Yeah, for I was sure definitely was creating it, and it made me feel so good because people were really sending me there. Uh, like their their love letters, like, oh my God, if it wasn't for you, I'd have committed suicide. I was stuck in this place. It was just a dark space. Bro, I almost had another baby, bro. I had I had that joint on. I just let it rock when you do the after dark joint. I got it. I'm gonna send it to you right now. It's I'm after going, night. I'm it's, going crazy. It's after dark night 94. After dark. I'm going crazy. Okay, easy, Listen, easy, I, I, after dark night 94. After dark night 94. I said your name. Hey, Lou. Right, right. Hey, Lou. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I see you over there with you, your, your you, wife. You see me you already. Because that's my favorite after dark. I had to, that's why I sent that. I said that uh, the payment because I, I knew I was what I was about to start you know what doing. Like, uh, keep me going. Don't, uh, let me influence my boy to keep going. Don't stop this job for me. I need this. Not, not I, don't just pop, yet. I don't pop one of them uh, blue shoes. 
crazy. Not the gas yeah. station. Not my boy, though. So let's get to some nonsense, oh, bro. Shit. All right, now I'm gonna ask you some nonsense, right? I got a segment up here. What's the segment, GF? Fuck all the small talk. <laughs> Don't get scared. Don't get scared. <laughs> Fuck all the small talk. Yo, is it true when you was out there doing what you did when you was younger? Did you just pop any of the teenagers when you was an adult? I had to ask you that any underage women. I had to ask you this. The people wanted me to ask you this. Asked nah, I never, I never crossed the line to uh, jump out the window to deal with any young young ladies at all. Um, and I think that the it people was a, think you capping, Frosty. No, nah, <laughs> oh, I said Frosty. Wow, yeah. I mean, look, I mean, little I man. Never, I never <laughs> edit that part. I, 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 <laughs> not my boy. I never crossed the lines because I knew the importance. I got a daughter. No, I knew my risk. I knew that I would be jeopardizing me being a father if if, right. if I was to get a, get off me charge. So, right. Word. You did, know, you, did you ever get like any pushback from doing them teen parties? And you, was I never adult? got pushback because you got to keep in mind nobody catered to the kids. I did that. Right. That's everybody forgot about the kids. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Like when everybody kept saying little man still doing teen parties, I said, well, little man keeping kids off the streets for four hours, right. keeping did, them safe. Because that era that, done now. I'm my, my little nephews and they don't got nothing to do. Oh, that's a good oh, question. I, yeah. I don't think they heard you, G. I'll say it again. Did you get that blueprint from DJ R. R. Tori T? R. 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 Rest in peace, Tori T. You know I'm a hit squad, nigga. I know. Uh. I want to say that the blueprint that Tori T left by was... Uh, I, I can't... I can say that I got the concept from Tori T. And the reason why I say that is because I don't know what a blueprint looked like. I wasn't behind doors yeah, planning yeah. the process. I didn't understand that. The blueprint would be they, they put it on the table for everybody to understand from top to bottom what it would be like to throw a youth party. I only had the, the perception of what it may look like. Oh, the people charging at the door, security, a venue, a nice DJ and sound. That's the perception. The blueprint would be laying out the fundamentals of it. Like, well, you know, you got to have this amount to do this, to do that. You can make this much if you do this. You got to sell concessions to do that. That would be the blueprint layout. So I won't say that the the his squad gave me the blueprint, but they definitely inspired me to be able to, to keep the legacy going on. Because you kind of had, like, his squad meets DMS type vibes. Yeah, yeah you and you know what's so crazy? And I always He was a hybrid. This. He was the first hybrid. But keep in mind, I want to be very frank, and I say this all the time, none of them motherfuckers believe in me. Damn, they what, I can what see you mean? Like, they was never, asking to book you and yes, t- those conversations. Of course. I had Jeez. one time Tori T threw me on the stage, and I remember this. I'll never forget. It was at the Robert Tree Hotel. Neo was supposed to come. Neo never came. While I DJ'd already, Tori didn't want to DJ because Neo wasn't coming. He threw me on the stage, and I DJ. You went crazy. You went, went nuts. crazy. I went crazy. I'm talking about wall to wall pack. This is the Tri State Ballroom. It's flooded in there. I'm in the Tri State Ballroom. It's crazy. It had to be every bit of 6,000 motherfuckers Robert in Robert Tree used to be what? It was it. And I didn't get paid, and I wasn't bitching about it because I felt like it was a platform that they gave me to be on that shit. Right, but, right, right. Um, you know, even with... Shout out to Cash. Shout out to... uh, uh, uh Shout out to Kira. Definitely Kira. Um, shout out to Bell, man. Bell is a good dude. I always used to say, let me do DMS team parties. And nah, little man, we got Reef. We good. We going high. Oh, I forgot about Reef. Yeah. DJ Reef, my guy. Yeah, my right number there, one. That's man. my dude. But they never gave me an opportunity to be able to, 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 to show my uh, my craft and talent, which I felt was great because it, t- it taught me that the same thing that being a producer and a DJ. Like, I got to do it on my own. I got to get it done. Right. Being that you was the first, one of the first DJs in our city, like, you know, Essex County, probably the whole Jersey. To have like a record deal, you was the one to have a real record deal. Yeah. How do you feel? Like, do, what do you feel like your responsibility is? You know what I mean? That you was one of the because you got one before the artist was even getting one. You seen how hard it was for us, and you was you know what I mean? You was doing it with the artist. You know what I mean? Having some of them rap on your John, and you was had breaking the dancers, dancers we ain't even know. You yeah. know what I mean? people we ain't even know. We had no clue who they were. And you know to piggyback I mean? on Louis question. Do you feel like you get the credit you deserve as an artist? Because you're not just a DJ. You're right, an artist. right. That's what I'm saying. Your number's right out the Fetty Wap as far as New Jersey artists, in Max. my opinion. And when it comes to the best, you, you never really mention when it comes to that. Uh, as far as the first question, um, <sighs> I'm going to come back to the first one. The second question, I don't really get the recognition, but I don't give a fuck. Right. Because I, I know I know what I was doing before I was doing it, right? Like, nobody was doing what I was doing when it came to doing party shit. Like, you had a few videos up, but you ain't have a consistent flow of videos. Like, nah. you know what I'm saying? Everything I did is documented. Everything. Literally, you could go on my... You could go on YouTube now and search DJ Lowman and look at videos from 2004. 
five, six, seven, packed events, parties, and, and shit that was created. So right. sometimes, f- fuck all of the credit. I don't really care. Like, the proof is there. You know what I'm saying? If somebody really wanted to be able to, to do some research based upon, they could go up there and look at that shit. So, and I don't really be fighting for credit. Like, right. credit don't pay the bills. That's, That's real fact. shit. I don't... But, I just but, had to address some other but shit, I, I don't, I'm about to say... What you had to address? Yeah, I'm about to say, because the D30 shit... Small fuck small. all the small stuff again. Because the D30 shit, the sturdy shit, it was kind of different. Like, you, it, yeah. you feel like, like you had mentioned it, like, kind of like you was kind of... Uh, so, my thing is, it's like, yo, listen, don't say, oh, we don't dance like these motherfuckers. Like, we the blueprint of this dance shit. Not boss, so, so. So. Not, so, look, and let's just be very frank. Blueprint, meaning that this dance shit, meaning we was the first ones really videotaping, putting shit out, consistently flows. Talking yeah. about cell phone Tutorials. Footage. Every yeah, day I would be recording my dance team, putting up a video on my page, right. tagging and building their brands, Right. To the point where everybody got hipped on to what we was doing, and we started collabing with them, showing these niggas how to do the shit. Right. And shout out to Philly and shout out to Baltimore dance teams and the dancers community because it took us a long time for all of us to come together. Right. And shout out to the DJs. You got some of them that play the fence, but fuck them. I ain't with none of the fence shit. Y'all got to tell the facts like it is, nigga. Like, yeah. you going to say the real or you going yeah. to the other side and it's green on you. I don't, fuck all of that. I don't need no yeah. relationships in this shit. Like, I'm good. So my whole shit rock with the least sturdy dude, he's a younger dude and everybody using that as an excuse, but his people around him is older. They should be schooling him. Right, so it you ain't his fault. It's his OG fault. I feel like it's his fault for lack of knowledge. Don't go on an interview saying that you don't want to do that and it's the same. He's like, this was, we was doing this shit when you was in eighth grade. Or probably just born. Seven, sixth grade. Like, swinging that shit. Cash you know used to be saying? swinging that shit, Paul. Like, really? <laughs> I just feel like as a, as, a, as a whole, if you're going to be doing something and you don't know the read, like it really costs nothing for you to say, you know what? We got our own little twist to it, but we was inspired by Jersey Dance. Right, Shout right. out to Jersey but we got our own thing called sturdy with it, like right. That's you know yeah, what I'm yeah. That's the proper way to go about it. That's it. I'd have been like, oh, why? Right, that's a young. But let me share this shit. Hell yeah! Shout out to Jersey. Shout out to them. Right. They got a new thing going on because you know what? Philly got some talent out there. Right. And I fuck with Philly. Like I fuck with Philly crazy. Like I used to always be on Temple. You, you know, the, the first nigga. You the first thing that brought me out there, had me perform out there in Philly. And, and it's so crazy. And you was DJing out. You was like, yo, I'm gonna give you a platform, Lou. I'm gonna bring you out here, let you perform. That might have been ten years ago. It had to be like about that. that. Cause that was the last. That was the last party I threw in Philly. It was yeah, about yeah. ten years ago. So yeah, as far as the D sturdy shit, like I don't, I don't feel no type of way. We're not arguing and debating about a dance. We debating and arguing about the fact that you could have just paid homage. Just it's simple. That's real shit. I don't give a fuck about a dance. And everybody, people dance when they happy. People dance when they mad. People dance when they got a piss. And, and he could have opened up a new network for himself too. That could have been a whole well. All right, well look, D sturdy. Like let's get them niggas. We could have cross marketed that. You exactly, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're not arguing about a bigger. dance. I just want to be very clear. It's not about the dance. It's, it's about, about the respect. respect. Yeah. And it's the principle. It's so simple to say, yo, look, I, you know what? We inspired by them. We don't do it completely like them. We do it our way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. I'd have respected that shit. Like, yeah, it's the rock your hips. Y'all just do a little twist to it. That's cool. Right. Same shit. Niggas is sampling old music right now. It's right. the same right. shit, but right. it's right. a different twist to it. I ain't yeah, right, mad right, at that. Right. Do what you got to do. But don't try to sun it and shun it like it ain't nothing, nigga. We, the, we are the blueprint. Right. You know what I'm saying? As far as Baltimore, people just got to understand the history of stuff. Like, the club beat isn't... It was started in Chicago, then went to Baltimore. So Bill had a relationship with all the OGs over there, got permission from the OGs to say, listen, I want to start something in Jersey, and then it went from there. Philly in between there somehow, you know... They, they, the, uh, Tamil and them adapted some of those, uh, Philly DJs and kind of created brick bandits in Philly. So everybody kind of like on the same page intertwining, but nobody was fucking with Jersey Club when we was doing this party. Everybody was like, oh, that's some gay shit. Oh, that's some whack shit. Yeah, oh, they they gangsta outside, but they dancing in the parties. Yeah, yeah. I was one of them. I ain't gonna lie. I was, I was down there. Niggas to be in there turning up. And you and get then outside, I see the monsters. They got five glocks at your ass. And the monsters outside dancing. You know what I'm saying? And outside, they knocking you there. Knock your, Easy, your fucking bro. head off. Off the rip. So, like I said, everybody, nobody wanted to fuck with club when I was pushing that shit from top to bottom. Nobody wanted to fuck with it. Oh, all right, that shit gay. That shit whack. Now, all the niggas, all the homeboys who were saying, yeah, that shit gay whack. Like, yeah, my daughter look up to you, bro. Could you take a picture with me? Like, yeah. Yeah, all right, yeah, no problem. You just came on, right? All right. And how you feel about this New Jersey drills club the music? Drill type? rap I feel club. like it's an elevation, man. Like, you know, everything evolves. It is what it is. I think it's in my personal opinion is it's in mixed messages, right? 
Jersey Club is built off fun and having a great time. We can't right. be bang, bang, shooting it up and right. then dancing at the same time, although we know that that is our product. We yeah. got a lot of gang bangers Yeah, because you just, you, you just said it. Yeah, you yeah. used to dance in the club and exactly. shoot it up outside that was the, the club. That was the real deal of it. We ain't talk about it. Yeah. We ain't say it. We did it. Right, right. So I salute them for doing it because it is another split-off evolution. You feel me? And it is growth. But right. at the same token, it's kind of like, you know, it's Jersey Club. It's just another it's drill. So I don't, I don't dislike it. I just... Want to be very clear on it just crosses the borderline of what message are we sending to our children while doing Jersey Club and Drill? So before we get out of here, I need you to answer that question. Being that you were one of the first to get a record deal, yeah. what's your responsibility to everybody? You know what I mean? How did you feel when you first got it? I think well? it's important, even for me, with, with, with having that deal is to understand the business. My first deal was I had a $450,000 advance and a $500,000 marketing budget. And some people look at that as like a lot of money. Right. It is a lot of money when you don't have a lot of money, but if you ain't making that much money, it ain't a lot of money because you're going to be in debt until you pay that back. Right. So you got to have a strong team. Shout out to management Starsky. Shout out to my lawyer, Cleve. Like, we had set, sat at tables days at a time to figure it out. Well, since you've already generated this on this song and that song, why don't we go back in and negotiate what you already have and then tell them to throw the rest of that to the marketing budget because that's unrecoupable. Mm. And that's what I did. Instead of me going in for the 450, taking the kill on the advance and got to pay it back and then getting 500 on the marketing, why don't you just give me 200 on the advance and throw 900 towards the marketing? Yeah. Because they don't get money back for marketing. Right. That's It's a signing bonus and an advance. Right. They don't... Recouping the marketing is not in the deal at all. Right. So my, my, my role into playing with it and letting people know what this deal shit is, you just got to have a great team with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to have a good team. And nine times out of ten, labels ain't even talking to niggas if they ain't got a lawyer right. or a manager. They not talking to you. It ain't nothing to really talk about unless they're going to have the A&R be your manager, which is a conflict of interest, because now he getting 20% plus another 20 off of bringing you in. He 40 right. in. Right, So unless he really, you know, killing you right now, that's the only way it's going to work. But I just feel like it's a lot of people that 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 it, that are that is going to get a deal real soon that just need a, a strong team around them. You know what I'm saying? So I just tell everybody, whoever whoever talking to these labels is cool and is cute. <laughs> but if you ain't got a strong team, which you're going to get screwed. That's why a lot of niggas start complaining about their deals because the paperwork looked good at the beginning when they throwing this money at you. But when it comes time to have to give that money back. And another thing, you got to understand how they want their money back. Right. If they give you $250,000 and they taking 20% of 100 and you, you think that that 80% is coming to you, it's not. That 80% is going into a reserved account until that they recoup in 20% mm. until they get to 100. Although you are getting 80, you would think to say, no, just take my 80 with the 20% and we good. No, it don't work like that. They want 20% every month until it totals up to however much they got from that they gave you in total, but through 20%. Not 20% plus your 80. Your 80 going to sit into an account until you recoup 50%, and then they're going to give you the remaining balance of that. Right. So people just got to understand a number game. I, I got screwed when I got my first YouTube deal thinking that I was going to be... Uh, and by the way, I was the second nigga to ever get a YouTube deal outside of uh, Salento. Watch talk, me talk. win. Watch me Nene, then me, then came D-Lo with the uh, uh, Bet You Can't Whip Like Me, hey. Can't Millie Rock. Like, we was the first three people who YouTube actually gave them a video deal for those shits. Um, but I thought by signing directly with YouTube... I would, it would be a clean cut. And it was. We recouped and everything was good, but I didn't understand the magic of the money. <clears throat> because although we was making $10,000 a month on YouTube, they only was taking $2,000. And they would only take $2,000 and leave the rest into a reserve account. Once that $2,000 gets to whatever the amount they gave me, then they'll give me another one. Mm. So if I'm taking a $75,000 video deal, out of that $75,000, they're going to keep Kept collecting two thousand dollars a month, mind you, you're making ten thousand a month. Right. They're gonna keep taking two thousand dollars a month until they get to seventy five thousand mm. dollars. They don't even care about that other eight thousand. That they don't even look at that shit. Right. But on the flip side of it, they're gonna sell you. Well, yeah, we got another seventy five thousand dollars for you, mind you. It's been your whole plus eighty percent. 
Yeah. It's been your 80%. That 8000 that's been sitting, that's been accumulating, that's just already been your money. They just giving you another deal right, right, with that. that. And then they're going to keep you in there to keep that $2,000 accumulating. So you just got to have people around you to pay attention to little shit like that. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I don't ever want another deal. All right. Facts. Right. You I got think. any artists? I don't. And I don't because people don't believe in themselves. And not only that, they're liabilities. A lot of the rappers and the people that I really want to fuck with who really get busy are liabilities. They in the street. I can't invest money in you. You want to go be locked up. I got to, like, I'm good. Right. You sound like Louie. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Everybody, I got Yo. some good ass, dope ass, you know, artists who really get to it. I don't consider them to be mine. I'll do a partnership with them. I right. won't do a let me manage you shit because I'm not investing into no. It'd be, it be hard to me and be invest on other artists when I'm still investing myself. I still do the music. I still dropping. I'm still streaming great. Yeah, I'm still making money off it monthly. And now you want me to take my money that I'm making monthly? It took me years to make. Yep. Invested in you. Yep. And you not even put out a video. Not only that, you got to keep in mind is the money that. and the work that you put in that you got to work towards you and you still got a family and you want me to invest in you. Right, right. And you want to bullshit. It's a liability. So that's the reason why I don't have an artist. And I feel like every DJ in Jersey should have an artist to sign, but they're just liabilities in my opinion. All right. You know what I'm saying? Well, little man, we appreciate you coming oh, up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Messing yeah. with us, man. Having those interviews. You ain't having an interview in a minute. This is one of the first Actually, in a while. Yeah. We had another one a uh, long time ago on Orange. That was years ago, yeah, though. That, that was, was like, oh, my God. Five, six years ago. You remember that? That was... You remember that? That was with... Uh, uh, creative Control. Yeah. Uh, uh, creative yeah, Control. Yeah, we paid yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1-0. He and... Uh, uh, yeah, now, I remember, yeah, now, I remember yep, yep. now. That was yeah. our old studio. Yeah, yeah. You remember yeah, that, remember now, remember. That, was, that was five, six years ago. I forget what that was. I was talking my shit on that one, too. Yeah. This is a different type of talk. This is a grown oh, yeah, man talk. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, The cameras look different. You know, the, I mean, the audience different. different. Everything is different, man. I just want everybody to be great in it and, and 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 learn the business, man. It's important, right? You know, stay the fuck out the way. Salute. We appreciate y'all. This beards and bottles. You did. Yeah.